All right, well, happy Friday, everybody. I'm Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of Ask a Painter Live. It's a weekly live Facebook show where I use my over two decades of experience as a craftsman and an entrepreneur to answer any of your questions. So today, uh, we have a couple things going on. Uh, I am live from one of my job sites here. We're enameling everything in the house, uh, trying to meet a, a pretty tight deadline here. We got, we got quite a few people on this one moving forward. Uh, we're gonna be joined by Louis Jasso, uh, everybody knows Lewis from uh, Surf Prep, uh, the brand new sander that's kind of hitting the market here. Uh, he'll be joining us live pretty soon. We'll also be going over the PDCA contractor question of the week, which will have something to do with uh, safety training. I'll kind of overview my uh, safety training program. So we'll kind of wait for um, Hannah and uh, and Lewis to, uh, to come on here. I'll make sure that we're able to get them on. All right, so uh, the PDCA uh, is the underwriter of this show, uh, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America. It's an awesome group of some of the best paint business entrepreneurs in the world and mostly North America. So um, they send in a contractor question of the week. The contractor question of the week for this week is how do you keep your team safe? How do you keep them uh, you know, safe throughout the year? And I thought I would just show you my uh, safety training program. So uh, Mike Yachek, how are you, sir? Um, so basically, uh, there is no thing, you know, I called up my insurance agent, I called up work comp, I called up whoever I needed to and said, is there a, just a thing that I can, I can do for a painting company that will basically check all the boxes, make sure there's no liability, make sure everybody's super safe and trained and there is not a thing. They basically say, well, here are things that other construction companies do, and unions do, and you can kind of pick and choose. So what I did is I went to OSHA first and I grabbed a bunch of fact sheets uh, stuff on ladders because ladders obviously are probably the biggest uh, safety hazard that we have um, okay so surf prep uh, request to join live there's a uh, little picture of a human with a little screen underneath it there and you can click on that and you can request to come live with me here see if that works for you I'm gonna go over my uh, safety training here while you're trying to do that uh, should be there should be some icons on the bottom here on mine mine is a little outline of a human a little box with another human in it you can hit that request to go live I will see I can't get you on here yeah I don't see you popping up as a potential so anyway I grabbed a bunch of stuff from OSHA uh, I wanted to uh, you know protect uh, my company and myself and all my people from as much liability as possible. Um, so there's no real great way to do it. So what I do is do a whole bunch of stuff that unions do and uh, other construction type uh, trades companies do um, and in the form of OSHA fact sheets, things like that. And then obviously there is things that um, people say you should do and there's things that actually then keep your people safe. So I created a whole bunch of training videos for my people uh, that they can look at and it's things that we actually do. It's very specific to our company, our processes, the projects we work on, very specific ways to keep them safe, not damage people's homes and, and uh, have productive things. So uh, OSHA fact sheets, I'll open up um, pretty simple. It's just a basic step ladder. Say so here's a step ladder, here's how you use it. Same thing with extension ladders. I also have my outline for safety training here. So it basically lists everything that I want to go through. Um, we have ladder safety, that's number one. Obviously, you know, inside, outside, extension, ladders, A-frames, up on roofs, how we handle with gutters. Uh, we do lift safety as well. Uh, lifts are becoming more of our life right now. Uh, roof safety is a big thing too. So we go over very specific things. What OSHA will not tell you is that, you know, don't stand on a drop cloth on a roof. What my training will tell you is don't stand on a drop cloth on a roof. You know, they have more things like rig up this gear and do all this other <laughs> stuff that may not be specific to our industry. Uh, sanding and scraping, personal protective uh, gear. Uh, we have coatings, you know, we, we still work with a lot of oil varnishes, uh, oil primers, things like that, safety when we're dealing with those. Power washing, uh, personal protective, and then just, you know, general safety with power washers, attire, uh, loading equipment. Uh, ladders on trucks you know one thing that OSHA that I couldn't find any guidance from OSHA is here's how you you know if you're gonna have a whole bunch of equipment on a uh, in the back of a truck or on top of a ladder rack there's really nothing that says here's what you need to do and it'll be perfectly liability free well I actually did that because there's a there's a way to do this where you won't drop a ladder on the road uh, and cause any problems and so if, it, if it's not provided by a big you know uh, safety organization or a national organization we just make it for ourselves um, and then company vehicles. Lots of sort of like state laws, federal laws, uh, company policies, things like that, because you know, in, 
in this trade, it's always going to be ladders and vehicles are the, are the sort of main hazards. And you basically just sign off on it. Uh, basically, on the first day when people come into the company, they sort of get that safety training. I want to get that under the belt first. We also have an uh, apprentice handbook that basically goes through, yes, safety training is a portion of it, but there's a whole bunch of you know employment policies and, uh, and other things like that. So we'll see if we can't get uh, Raphael. How you doing, sir? Jason, uh, thank you so much for watching. Parker. Let's see if we can't get uh, surf prep on here. So I'm not seeing surf prep or Lewis show up as somebody I can request to come on and add. So whatever you can do to get on here, just let me know. Make sure you have a good, uh, a good solid connection here. Oh, there's I see Lewis on there. Let's see if we can, we can add him to it. Oh, there we go. I think it'll take a second to register him. All right, so you're showing up as a viewer, but it doesn't have an add button next to you, Lewis. All right, Brian. So uh, safety training here, and I will show you guys. So we did a whole bunch of specific uh, safety training. Uh, we did one. Let's see if I can pull this one up here while we're waiting here. All right, let's see if we can get Mr. Jasso on here. So... Mr. Jasso, I'm seeing you as a viewer, but there is not an ad button on there. Are you on a phone, uh, laptop? Uh, I know that some people have had trouble in the past trying to do this through desktops or laptops. I know phones is usually the foolproof way to do this. For some reason, getting on live, or especially dual live, sometimes is, is a little bit tricky here. So, uh, video. Uh, I basically showed my people over the course of, let's see how long this is, now six minutes, how to basically load a uh, laptop on top of a truck. So yes, Lewis, uh, if possible, uh, cell phone is always the best. For some reason, um, going live from a laptop or a desktop usually does not, uh, not work always the best here. So let's see if we can, yeah, it doesn't give me the option. I can see you on there. It does not give me the option. It looks like Brian Kuhn, Stephen Smith, Parker Johnson, James Gilbert, they all have ad buttons, Jason Anke, Raphael D'Souza, they all have it on there, Chris Shank, oh, Chris Shank, all right, all right, so yeah, basically that's, I, we have about uh, two different forms of um, sort of uh, racking systems on our vehicles, things like that, and simple video, they just sit down and watch it, it basically shows them everything they need to do to make sure it's safe. Now, there is absolutely no way to 100% uh, keep yourself uh, free from liability, but uh, a combination of here's things that most trades do and here's things that actually work uh, in our field because you're never going to find, oh my God, all, there's this painter safety system that all you have to do is grab this, make your people read it, and you're 100% covered and they'll be safe forever. Uh, it's, a, it's a constant sort of reminder, uh, especially when we're on job sites here. After they do their initial safety training, that's more of like a, oh, here we go. Lewis is on there. Safety training. And, uh, we'll see if we can't get Mr. Jasso up here and talk about his surf prep sander. I think it's uh, it's blinking. It's adding him here. All right, should be coming up. So uh, in this process here, we have gone through this house. Oh, hey, Lewis, how are you? Hey, how's it? Good. How are you? Good, man. Uh, where uh, Where are you yeah, at? <laughs> no, no problem. No problem. Where are you at today? I am in uh, Lake Elsinore, California at Surf Prep. Oh, nice, man. I've been seeing that you've been doing some traveling, things like that. Oh, man, I've been all over. <laughs> I was in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina earlier this week and uh, flew over here uh, Wednesday. So, yeah, time changes and just <laughs> all over the place. So Nice. And where it's exciting. Where, I know you know the feeling. Oh, absolutely, man. Where's your home base? Where are you located out of? Houston, Texas. Okay. Okay. So not at home right now. <laughs> not at home right now. No, lots of work. Nice. So obviously we're here to talk about this beauty. Um, but, uh, I figured, um, we would sort of leave it up to you, uh, uh open forum. Uh, uh, I think people would like to hear about you. What's your background? Why are you involved with surf prep? And uh, and why are you interested in this? Yeah, so my background is I've always been in uh, contract finishing. So uh, I would do a lot of uh, refinish and new finish work for cabinet uh, manufacturers, millwork companies, 
Uh, we did direct to consumer work on the residential side and commercial side, uh, primarily only working with, uh, you know, solvent based lacquers. And now we're moving into the water base. That's why I was in North Carolina working uh, with a manufacturer to develop and test um, some water based coatings for cabinet refinishing and make sure, you know, they meet our standards uh, on the fine finish side to make sure they're good. Um, with surf prep, you know, I'm kind of, uh, uh, I'm a consultant mm -hmm. and I help them um, introduce the product to our market because surf prep has always traditionally been sold to large OEM cabinet and furniture wood product manufacturers. Um, you know, a little history about surf prep is they actually invented the foam sanding sponge. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, it was uh, it was through a, a company called Dixon Enterprises, which is uh, Surf Prep is a brand of Dixon, and uh, so they've always been very very innovative on the foam abrasive side. And um, you know, I met them years ago at an industry trade show, and um, I started using the product. And I came to them with this idea. I said, you know, you have a great product. We need to introduce it to the world, you know, to direct to consumer, the painters, the, the cabinet refinishers, you know, the DIYers. And uh, that's kind of how I got involved. And, and I couldn't be happier because it's, you know, it's a, an amazing product. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, obviously for, for somebody who's been around, um, you know, finishing a long time, I think we have kind of similar backgrounds. We've been doing this a long time. We have a lot of experience with traditional finishes. We're very interested in what's new. Right. And uh, immediately when, when you see something like this on social media, it piques your interest because you're looking at this little pad right here and you're saying, oh, that's different. Right. That's just not your average sander. And, you know, for anybody who's been doing this long enough, you know, some, some things go off in your head. You're like, oh, now we have potential uses for this. So that's what kind of piqued my interest. But uh, at least people in my field, you know, like architectural painters, residential painters, we know it's kind of the three by four sander, but that's not it. I mean, you, and, and this is not something that was dreamt up just for residential painters. This is stuff that's been used by pros and shops forever. And now it's just making its way into my field. Right, exactly. Yeah. So we have, we, you know, they're the largest cabinet manufacturer in the country runs surf prep mm. exclusively for all their finish sanding. So, you know, it was designed to run eight hours, 16 hours a day. Um, you know, our abrasive, I don't know if you found this, but especially like our foam abrasive, they last a lot longer. Yep. Uh, we have the sacrificial stair rate on that film abrasive that you just held yep. up. So it's an amazing product. Skylar, you want to say hi to everybody? Absolutely. So here's the, here's the man behind the product right here. That's Skylar. Skylar, how's it going, how man? He's, oh, he can't hear you. Sorry. Oh. Oh, you're right He's saying hi. <laughs> Nice uh, meeting you, Nick. Hey, uh, thank you so much for this, and thank you so much for this as well. So I appreciate it. <laughs> no, you're welcome. You're welcome. So we've been having a blast, and I, I should say that, you know, uh, at least everybody in my field has been going crazy for this stuff, but um, don't sleep on those surface prep lights, too. I mean, those are amazing lights. Uh, we got that thing in the shop. We've been trying to figure out LED lights and a, and a nice sanding system for the shop for a long time. And these two came to me at the same time and solved a lot of a lot of issues. So thank you for that. Right on. Yeah, a lot of problems um, uh, end up showing up in finish, as you well know. And having good lighting that you don't have to strain your eyes, you can just look down on the table and you can identify cross grain scratch or any kind of um, issues with uh, a finished product um, it, before it actually goes to coating where you're taking all that time and labor and money to apply a, a finish to it, it's good to be able to catch those before they show themselves after you've done all that work. So that was what uh, drove us with end users like yourself, users that um, are, you know, you're looking at your um, overhead costs. Mm -hmm. And because your profit can get eaten up in all those additional expenses and all the rework and the defects. We, want, we, want, we wanted to help people to be able to get a product through the process, get it completed, get it got done, get it installed so that you get paid and you move on to your next job. I absolutely so, agreed. And uh, one, you know, everybody, everybody marvels at the, the, the foam base so it, it can actually get into the contours and things like that. But one thing I don't hear a lot of people talking about, which is really underrated, is that this is actually just a really 
refined quality machine. If, if people have used a lot of sort of random orbital sanders over the years, like I know most painters in their past, we've always gone out and bought that 1999, you know, five and a quarter inch random orbital sander and your hand goes numb after yeah. five minutes. And this one has such a, uh, like a refined sort of, um, vibration to it. it it seems like a very quality machine right. even compared to some of the other sanding systems i've had so that's a really nice thing yeah well you know and, and there are a lot of good products in the marketplace and we know that and um one of the focuses for us because uh, um our tools get into a lot of oems mm. and we might have 50 women sanding with a sander eight hours a day and if you're a five foot seven lady and you're standing on a in, in a finishing environment where you've got a hanging line and you're standing above your shoulder, so the tool is above your, your shoulder, the height of, above uh, your head, yep. it starts to wear on a human being's shoulder, her elbow, everything. So when we designed that tool, um, we, the motor had to be perfectly balanced, mm. the counterbalance had to be perfectly balanced, so that when you, um, um, when you hit that throttle lever, you feel nothing working against your body. So we wanted that, uh, the ergonomics of it to be such that someone could grip that and, um, and run it and use it and be able to get through the day and not be beat up at the end of the day. Yeah, and I was really so, surprised by that because, I mean, if I, I'm sure we're the same way, same thing like Lewis, where, I mean, we've probably logged a few thousand hours with some sort of vibrating sander in our hand. And when we felt the surf yeah. prep one, it's, it's, it is a big difference. It, it is just different. Cool. Well, we're... We, we just want people to – sanding typically is not the funnest part of what you guys do and what you ladies do. And so if we could make it, um, you know, to where people are getting through that work and they're having less trouble with it, that was the objective. That was the goal. No, that's awesome. So, uh, so. thank you for supporting uh, people in my trade, and thank you for providing great tools. It, it, it does make our lives easier, especially for one of the least favorable tasks that we do. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you got it. Absolutely. We'll keep working hard. We appreciate – you know, all the patronage, we appreciate the support, and uh, we're just here to serve, and we want to help people. That's uh, it. Well, it shows, so thank you so much, and hopefully we can run into each other at an industry event sometime. I know that uh, Lewis might be at the next uh, PDCA Expo, the Painting and Decorating Contractors Expo, so hoping to run into you guys yep. there. Right on. You will. Awesome. All right, man. Hey, thank you so much for doing this. You bet. All right. So I've been seeing some things on social media. Like number one, I know that uh, we're probably going to see each other at the PDCA Expo in early March. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So I will be out there. Hannah will be out there. Uh, I'll check with Skyler and see if he's going to be there. And we're excited. You know, this is our first PDCA show. Um, I coming from the industrial coating side. You know, the paint industry is is new for mm. me. It's new for surf prep. And we're excited, you know, we really are. We actually were in meetings this morning uh, discussing our displays and everything because we do like the really, really large woodworking shows. Yeah. And uh, this, is, this is just different, you know, it's different. <laughs> so we're, we're pumped. No, yeah. and, and are, you doing, uh, are you doing something more than just showing up? Are you gonna be doing some demonstrations or I've been seeing some things on social media? I not at this show. I'll be at a show in uh, Vegas oh, okay. um, where where I'll be doing a demonstration show. I I asked, you know, uh, but I, it was full. I think it was a little too uh, late you. for me to do anything. I get you. No, yeah, yeah I, I must have been thinking about the uh, yeah the Las Vegas one. But that's very interesting. So, um, yeah, what yeah. Uh, what what else is on the horizon for you for surf prep? What's exciting to you? What what can we look forward to? Well, we're really excited, you know, to start our direct-to-consumer program. We actually have the packaging company here now. That's who we're oh, meeting nice. with so that we can re repackage some of the products. Um, because, I mean, everybody knows us for the, you know, all of the foam stuff for the sanders. But like I said, I mean, we invented the sanding sponge, you know, so we have all of that. We have um, a product that a lot of people are getting really excited about is uh let me find it here is our colored uh hand pads oh so these, really cool um yeah these are you know we have these in factories all over the country and it just makes sense because they last so much longer than a piece of sandpaper and they're foam backed yep. 
So we're trying to repackage these to smaller quantities so that we can get these to the public and everybody can try them out. So we'll be giving a bunch of this stuff out at the PDCA show. Perfect. Yeah. And, and especially uh, foam back stuff for anybody who's ever taken just a folded up piece of sandpaper and sanded for a while. I mean, your fingers feel it in no time. And that, that even a little bit of foam backing is a huge help. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I've been, Definitely. I've been getting some great feedback from other painters. Cause you know, the first time when I posted, when you guys, um, you know, hooked me up with one of these, I, I started using it in the shop out in the field and I posted about it and immediately people are coming back, like saying, Hey, this sandpaper actually lasts a really long time. So again, just like, just like the motor, uh, on that thing, it's very balanced, very refined, not normally a selling point, but it's those sort of things, you know, the, the long lasting sandpaper, the, the balanced motor that are sort of things that people don't really talk a lot about, but are for me, probably the most important thing. So it's just a really interesting machine. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, it's because of the technology that we use to uh, um, uh, attach the, the mineral to the abrasive, mm. you know, so if you notice on our foam abrasive, you know, any piece of sandpaper, you take it and you rub it together and all of the abrasive starts to come off, uh, right? Yep, yep. Well, if you, if you do that with our foam, it doesn't happen. That's why it lasts so much longer. Oh, nice. That's really cool. I did not know that. So, yeah. Wonderful. Let me, let me. A little experiment. Yeah, you can, uh, uh, I'm going to scroll through, see what kind of questions we have here. Um, if you've got a topic or something you want to talk about, you can certainly uh, throw it out there while I kind of look through here like that. Uh, thank you to the PDCA for watching. Uh, John DeRome, uh, I can say that the sandpaper does last longer than my older paper. Oh, good, good. Uh, all right, Antonio, how about creating a sanding station package uh, for a good price for the basic sander vacuum end lines? I think that's what they offer. So you should uh, you should get in touch with Louis uh, Antonio or uh, or look up Surf Prep because not only do they have you know these beauties, you guys have some you know random orbital sanders. You have the the beautiful LED oh, prep yeah. lights. You also have the uh, vacuum systems as well. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we have the three by four is what everybody's going crazy yep. over right now, but we have a five inch, we have a six inch, uh, we have a three inch round and we have a three by eight all in electric and air. So, uh, you know, on our website, you can see all of the product offering. And again, because we are, we do do a lot with OEM, we have to have all of those products. Um, I think it's just everybody's seeing it and it's different and for cabinets, um, it makes sense on that three by four, oh, yeah. you know, especially with our interface pads and the film and the foam. So uh, really cool. Stuff. And I, I would say um, and oh, to answer his, uh, to answer his question. I mean, we are, we are, we are working <laughs> on different storage solutions uh, for our site finishers because, you know, the, the biggest reason that uh, I'm here is to help them understand the pain that we go through as site finishers with transportation you know, with having everything out, um, you know, all of the variables that we run into uh, doing residential yep. work. So we're really working hard and Skylar is so innovative, man. And, and we will come up with that perfect solution. I promise you. I love it. And, and it's really interesting too, that you guys probably could not have showed a bunch of house painters this at a better time, because as you know, you know, cabinetry refinishing, not just painting cabinets, but going into homes like right now, I have a team of about seven or eight people in this house and we're doing just that we're taking blonde maple and we're turning the whole house into enamel and that could probably not come at a better time for the height of cabinet finishing in houses <laughs> absolutely yeah absolutely all right so antonio also says what about scotch bright pads for solid surfaces do you is that something we have them yep okay. we have non-woven pads so, and we have the non-woven pads for the sanders. So we have a hook and loop non-woven and we also have um, a non-woven, you know, just a regular non-woven like everybody's used to. Very nice. And uh, Mike Yachek, I know that he's over in the UK. He's, uh, he wants to know if he can get that stuff in the UK. We, we can ship to the UK. It's just typically the shipping price, you know, is, is high. Yep. Uh, there's nothing we can do about that, unfortunately, but we do ship to the UK. Well, uh, Mike, uh, in early March, you should take a trip to uh, Savannah, Georgia for the PDCA Expo, uh, take an extra carry-on, and the $50 you pay for your yeah. carry-on is probably a hell of a lot cheaper than, uh, than shipping it by boat over there. So, <laughs> Absolutely. Nice. Yep. All right. Yep. So um, you came from the sort of contract finishing world like that. Um, 
what what is what is exciting to you in sort of cabinet finishes, high tech coatings, things right now, and then we'll kind of bring this to a close. Yeah, no, uh, you know, I'm really, really excited. I don't, I've always sprayed solvent-based lacquers and conversion varnishes, um, you know, solvent-based 2K polys mm -hmm. and polyester finishes. Um, this week I've been, I was actually with three, four different chemists um, in a lab applying water-based coatings. Um, and this manufacturer, I'm not going to mention any names, but they're really big with uh, automated water-based coatings. Oh, sure. And they've... Yeah, so uh, UV water-based coatings, you know, oh, the ones that are nice. running through and, and cured instantly. So they've formulated some off-the-gun finishes that are, it just blew my mind, honestly. And I've sprayed thousands and thousands of gallons, seriously, of lacquer and conversion varnish in my day. And uh, I had my, my doubts, honestly, but, you know, we did adhesion tests, we did chemical resistance tests, we did cold check tests, we did everything. And we did it on all different species of wood. We mm. did it on refinish application, raw wood, HDF, MDF, everything. And uh, I am really, really excited to see the direction of the water-based coatings because it's safer. Yeah. You know, uh, as a third generation finisher, um, I, I've been around finishers all my life and my grandfather, you know, he's 78 and still does this. Wow. And he has all the old timers coming to his shop and, you know, they tell the stories and you see the health issues that come from working around these solvent based products, uh, you know, for 20, 30 yeah. years. And um, I am really, especially for site finishers, these cabinet refinishing uh, companies, uh, the water based technologies are, are phenomenal. And uh, I'm excited to watch it go that direction. As absolutely, too. And uh, every year, round about the changing of the year, uh, December, January, I get in the shop and I, I'm always hoping for that unicorn to come through where, you know, something, a water-based finish that adheres like an oil, that sands like an oil, that blocks mm -hmm. tannins like an oil, and, and, and is just, a, yep. you know, readily available and inexpensive and all those things. And every year, it seems like we're getting closer and closer. Um, but in, yep. in my world, closer and closer means available, you know, within 20 minutes from me. I know that there are things out there, right. you know, some, some things that we have to source or uh, things that are only available in factories. I, my hope is that within right. the next five years to convert everything I do to water base. And, you know, five or 10 years ago, you know, everybody runs into the same thing. We, we try out that one big major brand who came out with their water based polyurethane. And it was just a nightmare. And all of us were like, well, what the heck? What are we supposed to do? Like, is this what, you know, is this what we have to look forward to in the future? But it, it's hopeful because every year I see it getting a little bit better. And, uh, yeah, I fully believe that in, uh, in five years it, when we're going this way, um, I'm, I'm hoping to replace all my finishes with water base. So it's really good to hear because I know we're both kind of coding science nerds. And um, I know you get, you get yeah. to probably dabble into more of the fun stuff than I do. I kind of have to do like, what's available within 20 minutes of me. And I'm kind of limited by that. So, <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's the big thing. And that's why I said, I'm not going to mention any names because that part has to be figured out. Like the codings are there, but the availability is not. Yep. And uh, you know, I'm a big proponent. Anytime I a codings company comes to me and asks me to talk about their product. I mean, I have to make sure that my base, everybody that's listening right now has access to it because if they don't have access to it, you know, what's the point? And uh, they're getting there. Yep. They're trying to figure it out. And the thing is, I think a lot of these companies, they're, they're coming from Europe, you know, they're Italian coatings, yep. or uh, they might be coming from South America or something like that. And the distribution, um, it's just not there yet. So, you know, maybe PDCA and uh, companies like that, I'm excited to make new contacts because all of my contacts are in OEM yeah. uh, primarily. And uh, I'm really excited to make some new contacts and start networking and, you know, help. And that's, that's what it's all about. I mean, I think you and I, we're both, we want to help people. Yep. That's why we do things like this, right? Couldn't agree more. So. Yeah. And, and what's hopeful to me is that, you know, 10 years ago, water-based polyurethane started becoming available and it seemed like this slow churn right. to get anything better. Um, and then all of a sudden within like a year or two ago, 2K Poly started to show up on social media and do this. And in a very short time, a local Minnesota distributor, you know, it used to be where I, I had to order when it first came out, everybody was like, Oh, Nick, you got to use this. And we all know the Italian brands, the 2K polys, this and that, right. and they're like, you got to try this. And my yep. nearest distributor 
was about an hour and 45 minutes away and there was a two week wait time and they had to mix it there. So if I needed an extra gallon, yep. it was, and then they couldn't ship it in the winter for me uh, because it's, it's, it's yep. hellish up here. So, and within a very short time, like a year or, or a year and a half, one of, uh, one of the big uh, Minnesota paint manufacturers actually started carrying it. So we've seen it ramp up to introduced, becomes popular. And then within a year, it's actually within not that far from me. So I'm hopeful that a lot of these other technologies can make it down too, because nobody, uh, nobody wants that stuff more than you and I. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's, it's, it's good stuff. You know, it, it really is. And um, yeah, I'm excited. I really am. We were actually spraying a mono component, you know, a single component, not a two component, 70% solid water based coating that performs wow. amazingly. Amazing. So um, it's, it's cool, you know, because the thing with the two K's is it, it's water based, but once you add that hardener, you, you're getting isocyanate. And even though it's not, you know, a radical isocyanate, it's, it's still not great for you, you know. So when we go to those acrylic emulsion products that are uh, mono component, that's, that's awesome. If we can get the same durability out of them. Uh, a couple of comments ago, uh, we'll, we'll do this and then we can close it up. But Antonio said, uh, sure. isn't Malizi, uh introducing an ISO free 2K poly? Have you heard anything about that? Yeah, so they're doing the BCA. It's the blockchain edition. It's not a 2K poly. It's not, you know, a lacquer. It's supposed to be a new technology. Um, the thing is, it's not released yet, so we don't know. It's uh, going to be formaldehyde free and isocyanate free with a three-day pot life. Um, it sounds like a great technology. I'll be excited to try it. Oh, that's awesome. So, uh, Lewis, what, what we'll do then is I won't make you sit through me sanding a cabinet door, but I will do that. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you, I'll yeah. let you go. Thank you so much for doing this, uh, especially because you're away Thank from you. home. You're, you're at HQ yeah. getting all the good information around all yeah. the good people. So, Thank you so much for doing this and, and thank you and thank you to yeah. everybody there for providing, you know, these great tools that us painters use. So. No, absolutely. I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks in Savannah. Absolutely, man. We'll see you then. Have a good weekend. All right. Thanks. Bye. All right, folks. So I'm Lewis. I'm not going to make him sit through me sanding a cabinet door, but I will do that only because it's fun to do with this one. So we'll get this guy down here. And then we'll call it a weekend here. I got to get back to work on this job site here. So uh, typical cabinet door. We got the, uh, the prep light here. Uh, I have my uh, Merca hooked up to this. I'm going to fire up the uh, vacuum. And you can see the, the pad will get right into the contours here. Now you can see here, uh, especially with raking light, now um, halogen lights, uh, standard LEDs that are just sort of general broadcast lights do a fine job, but when you can get a linear light like this, an LED light uh, to cast a direct line across the cabinet door, you start seeing all the little things that need to be done. So it's a, it's a huge benefit, a combination of a good sander, good prep light, it's just an amazing system. So. Um, all right. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for watching today. Uh, I do appreciate this. The kindest thing you can do is to like the Ask a Painter page and share it with other like-minded people so we can get more discussion here uh, with people like Lewis. Uh, very much enjoyed meeting him this year, getting to know him. Uh, we're going to see each other face-to-face -face, uh, in early March at the PDCA Expo. I will be presenting a topic there. Uh, guys like Dustin Zapanzik, friend of the show, Jason Paris, uh, the Elon Musk of the industry will be there as well presenting. A uh, whole bunch of great paint business entrepreneurs from all over the country, Canada, Mexico, things like that. Look forward to everybody there. Uh, also, thank you to the PDCA for underwriting this. Uh, I do enjoy all the questions that you guys send me, and uh, it was great to see everybody down at headquarters 
uh, this last month here when I was in an event in Missouri. So thank you everybody uh, for watching. Uh, thank you for supporting Surf Prep and the PDCA and everybody have a good weekend.